Uh, so, so truth be told, because I, you know, I, I kind of lied to the audience. I had a microphone on my head like <laughs> an hour ago, uh, but I told the audience I was gonna, you know, we're gonna run ten minutes late so that I could find a microphone. I didn't want to admit that I was watching Rachel Maddow because I wanted to see if Rachel Maddow was actually going to waste our time the way I suspected she was going to waste our time. And so far, ten minutes in, if you didn't drop like something. 10 minutes in, in the first 10 minutes, if you don't drop something before the first commercial, that means you don't have anything. So Rachel Maddow says that she has uh, Donald Trump's tax returns. Now, in full transparency, everybody already suspected that, you know, she floated that it was from 2005. So nobody had any expectation going in that it was something recent, like 2012 or 2014. Um and the White House subsequently came out really quick and said, you know, quoted his numbers his, from his 1040 that year. Uh, Brandon, you had those numbers. Do you, you recall? You have those numbers handy. What were yeah. those numbers for? Uh, that he paid thirty eight million dollars in taxes on one hundred and fifty dollars, four hundred fifty million dollars. All right. So that was his. Basically, that's all you're going to pull out of a 1040. Um, you can get I mean, I guess you can get a couple of the items from the 1040. Let me let me not say that. So but. Before the first commercial break, she has not done anything but set up this big explainer as to why his taxes are important. And uh, I mean, can can I uh, no shit, Sherlock? We know his taxes are important. We're quite. I'm quite sure that you're going to find something that he doesn't want you to see. Otherwise, he would just release them. However, Rachel Maddow has just wasted the time of all of interested America. I won't say all of America because well, most of America is probably watching Real Housewives of something right now. But Rachel Maddow no, is just no. wasting her time. <laughs> Whatever. No, though, no, I don't no. even want to... she's, wasted, she's wasting my time and your time. But I mean, let's literally break this down, right? Uh, this whole tax thing along with the Russia thing that has preceded it on what Rachel Maddow is going through is not meant for us, right? Mm, you know, this, right. Is not, this is not a critique of Trump or the Trump administration that's meant for you know, people on the progressive left, people on the critical left. This is meant for the, you know, this has been as more red meat for the liberals, uh, the, the, you know, the still with her crowd, those people who are going to town halls and, you know, making doing making them into a recreation of that one boardroom scene from Dr. Strangelove. That's who this is for. And, and <laughs> frankly, you know, and frankly, it is interesting to watch Rachel Maddow go on this downturn, right? A few years ago, or rather a few, um, yeah, just, ago, before, just before just before yeah. this election, right? Yeah, a few months ago. I mean, I remember saying, well, hey, you know what? I don't watch MSNBC, but Rachel Maddow does stand out uh, on MSNBC as being decent on more than a few things. Uh, way yeah. better than Chris Hayes, way better than, um, well, definitely better than Joe Scarborough. But since the, since the election, since the election of Donald Trump, she has really been Even a before. Yeah. But she's been falling apart since before. Like she slowly but surely drifted away into this abyss of um, believing her own. Like, like she she did it so. In the primaries, she started pandering for Hillary Clinton, right? But it started getting to the point where it wasn't just pandering. She actually started believing some of the bulls that she was saying. Now she's locked in. She's she's on the same level as Joy Ann Reed, in my opinion, in terms of the psychosis, in terms of the Russia hysteria. And 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 again, anybody who watches my show, uh, they're probably frustrated with me because I'm the first one to say, if there's something there, let's investigate to see if there's something there, and then let's address it accordingly, blah, 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 blah. However, the hysteria that MSNBC is stirring up is undermining undermining not only their legitimacy, which I don't really care about, is undermining the the quote unquote resistance against Trump because it's 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 validating in the minds of people who think that liberals are have and progressives uh, have no nothing valid against this president. And they're really undermining that when instead they could be focusing on the issues that really sincerely matter. They're 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 pandering to this clickbait, which, you know, they're getting their ratings. They're getting their ratings because it's a fever pitch and they're doing I think they're they're escalating a level above what Fox News was years like they, they they've taken they've taken where Fox News left off 
and they decided, well, we're not just going to repeat it. We're going to go from here and go higher and go further and go even more insane. So MSNBC is really undermining themselves. And I think this is what this whole Donald Trump tax return tonight was all about. I, I for one, and I'll toss it back to you, Brandon. I, for one, I refuse to do a sensationalization story, a sensationalized story for the sake of clicks, because what's more important to me is having substance that people can always come back to versus the hype that they, they got you there. She might have a million, two million viewers tonight. Tomorrow's just going to have like, you know, half that or a quarter of that. Well, I mean, you hit the nail on the head right there, right? So since she has adopted this fear-mongering Neil McCarthy rhetoric, her ratings have shot through the roof. I believe last time I checked um, her countdown to the Russia, the Russia Trump connection countdown in the you know subsequent show was rated at number one. She blew Fox News out of the water. And this is where Rachel Maddow and you know Huffington Post and a lot of these you know liberal media outlets have got are very dangerous for the Democratic Party because they are amping up this Russia hysteria. They are amping it up. They yeah. are they they are they are making this vast, com complicated conspiracy, and they're you know they're further feeding that fire. When right now needs to be the time in which the Democrats are pulling back from that, because as we saw in an interview from with BuzzFeed, and I hate having to reference BuzzFeed because it's BuzzFeed, but this is literally an interview that they did, and it's the only place that had really referenced this. Uh, they BuzzFeed news reporters interviewed members of the Senate Intelligence Commu uh, Committee who was responsible for investigating this connection, and they have said. Already, they do not believe there is any evidence of direct collusion between Trump and the Kremlin, Trump and Putin, uh, in order to get him elected or any direct interference. And that they find it quite frustrating that both Democrats who are outside this investigation in the media are, you know, ramping up the rhetoric. They are ramping up this hyperbolic rhetoric and making it, for, you know, making it impossible to pull back, making it impossible to do their job in any reasonable way. And Honestly, yeah. Rachel Maddow is putting the Democratic Party in a very difficult position in which at some point yeah. they're going to have to pull back from this Russia Trump narrative. They should do it. They, they should obviously right. be doing it now because if they wait and they go through a full, not that there, there shouldn't be a special prosecutor, a special investigator into this whole thing. But if they if they don't start de-emphasizing that from their strategy to defeat and resist. What we're going to have is 12 months of more rhetoric only to you know, get to 2018, right before the right before the midterm elections, and they're going to lose again. I'll shift gears. Let's go back to Rachel Maddow. She is getting scorched. Right? She is getting murked on Twitter she, right now. Did she not say anything? She, did, she, did she not? Have, did, she not did she not? Um, did she not re release any in, in, you know important information? <laughs> uh, not, nothing. Uh, up to the mentions for Rachel Maddow, and, and this they're like um, the, my favorite so far is Rachel Maddow went full fake news. You never go full fake news. Uh, paying homage to uh, that that super racist movie uh, back in the day, um, uh, and super, super, super you, Tropic Thunder. Thank you. Uh, um, then then uh, my boy uh, D'Lo Taylor on Twitter. Uh, you guys should follow him at D'Lo underscore Taylor. He said, as you watch Rachel Maddow destroy her career live on MSNBC with this bogus Trump tax return story, keep this in mind. And he shared the meme of, of Gerardo and the Capone vault saying, the internet never forgets. I mean, she is, I, I, this is why, this is why no matter what, even at, at our paltry level, right? We're, you know, we, we might have, you know, 5,000 people who will consume my content by tomorrow, right? right? Live, we'll only have a few, a few dozen who are listening or watching, watching live. Um, but even at our paltry level, we know better <laughs> than to oversell a story that you can't deliver on. I would not. I would have gone to my social media manager and I would have gone personally have gone to my editors, my whoever, whoever my I would have gone to them and and, and ripped them a new one and told them to pull. The, I would fire somebody right now. But the thing, the fact of the matter is, is it's probably Rachel Maddow who was like, yes, oh, let's push this. This is going to be great. The ratings are going to be great tonight. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is not going to hurt her at all. I think that you're living in a, a, a bubble. But the people, the, the people who decided to watch this, right? The who knew it was the people who knew that it was one tax return, one ten forty from two thousand and five, who still decided to watch this. 
I do not think they are actually absorbing the content of what she is saying in terms of like the actual minutia and detail and how completely meaningless it is. I think that they are absorbing the, like the spectacle of her releasing a tax reform and her talking about how bad Trump is. Same with her Russian connection. I think this is going to be fine for her. I think that the people <laughs> who are watching it are going to enjoy it. From my perspective, like and this is why I said she was she's been on a downward spiral in terms of quality since the election, because the first time I was like, okay, well, Rachel Maddow is done to me was when she came out with the fake math. Forget fake news. She did fake math after the election. Yeah. Uh, when she decided that, well, hey, if you just take all these votes from other people and then 18 more people, thousand more vote, then, you, then Hillary Clinton wins. <laughs> like she went full Glenn Beck. All she was missing was the whiteboard. And so oh my. I got, hang on, hang on. I got I to gotta jump in there. Uh, Sean Spicer. Um, oh, no. Okay, it's a parody account. Never mind. Shut my mouth. Go ahead. Finish your thought. No, so it, it, it's gotten to the point where Rachel Maddow and MS, Rachel Maddow specifically and MSNBC generally is, you know, they're doing what David Brock was, you know, has tended to try and do. Like they're making the Breitbart of the left, but in this case, they're making the Fox News of the left. And I, and I will say this, apparently what she's doing with these tax returns are not exactly legal. And, you know, it's a form of, I, I, I feel, of whistleblowing, but part of whistleblowing, part of, you know, uh, leaking stories, part of, you know, violating the law to do that kind of thing as it exists, you know, it usually necessitates the thing, the thing that you're leaking or whistleblowing actually being, actually meriting the law being broken. Like where, like where this becomes egregious is that this is probably against some federal statute, which I'm pretty sure it is, and it's also completely meaningless. And wow. so it's like so, <laughs> dude. Like I cannot stand. I, I I personally like the 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 scum of the earth. Um, would be the people who uh, Trump supporters who are who are who don't care. Like they they have no they they love everything that Trump is doing that that particular group the deplorables I'll use her term cuz actually they are deplorables but when I tell you uh, that the shit they are saying right now about Rachel Maddow is so hilarious I almost want to retweet every single one of them because here's where here's where it matters let me tell you where it matters and um Guys, you know I'm at home, but I can tell my microphone is crappy. I can just I can hear it, the echo. But anyway, here's where it matters. Um, professionally, right? You know, there. You know, as as much as professionals, her colleagues um, probably give each other leeway. There are there are there's jumping the shark moments in your career professionally. She's going to be fine because you're going to always have people who want to run up and 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 get more of the latest Russia conspiracy theories. So fine, she'll keep getting ratings, but she does not have a path forward after this i'm sorry like this is this is taking the national attention and in using it for something worse than clickbait um so as a professional she's she's putting dings on her record as a professional it, will it hurt it, her in the long run probably not because she makes like what eight million a year so she probably doesn't need the next job she probably could just retire after this but it, it depends know. on what she's a, what she's a professional of and like what is she she's not a professional tragic. journalist <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's, she's a professional media, you know, media personality, professional, you know, liberal think piece, you know, rather a liberal thinker. Like, like, that's what she does. So this right here, this, what she's saying, this sort of micromanaging and hyper-focus on Russia and tax returns that are completely devoid of any kind of policy substance is exactly what where the Democratic Party is at right now. So we might look yeah. back. 10 years from now and go, wow, those were dark times. And Rachel Maddow was doing fake math and, and counting and having a 24 hour countdown to that one time that Donald Trump ate pierogies and isn't Poland kind of close to Russia or in the, in the Russian power. Like, look at, look at these, look at these connections. But ultimately we don't really tend to do that. We don't tend to look back and, and MSNBC and so far that it's been a jerk, like has journalistic integrity. Like they lost their journalistic integrity when they fired Phil Donahue. It's like really, like really, like, like this is confabulation on the part of people trying to like remember a time when MSNBC was anything but liberal propaganda, pro state. Propaganda. Well, 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 be sure, be sure. Now, I mean, they're they're barely liberal propaganda. Like, I mean, they're they're barely they're they're good and solidly neoliberal neocon. I mean, look at the commercials. They're they're neocon uh, commercials. So you know, they they're 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 right center, death smack in the center of the belly of the beast. Like the when and and I, the only reason I draw that distinction is not for you so much because I know you know the the the, the, the difference. But it's for the average listener who who may have this conception that MSNBC represents anything on the left. They don't represent anything left 
left of, of Hillary Clinton might own some issues be to the right of Hillary Clinton. They they do not represent leftist politics in America. And I know I'm not saying you said that, Brandon, but I just want to make sure I echo that. No, no, it's, it's, no, it's definitely fair. I mean, Stand, I, mean for, no, I, I definitely agree with you. And I think that ultimately MSNBC, well, all mainstream, it's like, you know, this is the, the illusion, right? All mainstream media is entirely conservative because it's owned by, you know, corporations and it's mm -hmm. pro-state, it's pro-corporation. So it can only be, it can only be conservative. It can only it can yeah. only be that by nature of it's by nature of who operates. Here's, here's the other problem though, Brandon. Here's all the other problems. Like there are legitimate ways of slamming Donald Trump and pimp slapping him until his face is red uh, and and not orange. Uh, there 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 are plenty of. I mean, let's 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 let's, let's work the week in reverse, right? Let's but talk but rather, about but rather, before 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 you add, answer the question, what can you slam him on that? Would not also implicate a lot of other corporate, a lot of or, who corporate cares? So, so, so let, let, let me let's let's be real. Like they don't have really a problem. Really. They they don't have they do not have a problem with being hypocr hypocrites, right? So they one hundred percent can attack uh, Donald Trump without even being that hypocritical on his escalation in Yemen, right? Go ahead and be a hypocrite because you're good at it. So who cares? But then he legitimately increased it by 400%, 400 plus percent, the drone strikes in Yemen. Like, destroy him there. For, okay, there you go. So, and then, then of course, the, the number of people, like, you know, on, on Affordable Care Act that are going to lose their coverage. Like, that is, that's a gold mine. That is a gold mine in so much as it is now, Obamacare is now more popular than it has ever been. The, and this is a give me, this is a give me to their to their corporate base, not their progressive base, but to their corporate base. They get to stand and grandstand on Obamacare, which is a handout to healthcare industry to the healthcare industry, but they're not even doing that in exchange for Russia, right? They're not even doing that properly because they're so fixated on Russia. That's what I'm saying. Oh no, exactly. But this is why I said from before a lot of this Russia talk is also a way to soothe their egos. Because a lot of this is, uh, you know, a post hoc justification for why they lost, right? So you have, so you have your Rachel Maddow's and your Chris, you know, your Chris Hayes. And I think that largely you're like you're looking at this entirely from a point of political expediency. And I am trying to mix in not only this about political expediency, right? Not only is this about you know how they can make their money and how they can ignite the Clinton loyalists, you know, to donate to the DNC and can you know maintain that kind of activation, but also they're engaging yeah. in a mass delusion about why they were wrong yeah. and so if you look at it specific, you know per, if you look at it like i said before you know the politically expedient thing to do in order to win midterm and special elections would be to drop the russia thing go yeah. hit 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 health care hard you know not don't only you know uh prop up obamacare but prop up single payer hit health care hard they can't do that obviously because of the who they're doing well, this is where they're dumb though this is what but this is where they're dumb and i'll let you explain thought. why they lost that would not explain why they lost. Right, right, and and that's uh, that's all this is. They they they're in and and actually, let me let me fix that statement. It actually could legitimately be something more, but they're using it as a crutch purely to assuage the, their anger and their disillusionment with the fact that they lost, and so they're even undermining the national security implications, if any, because they're 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 hyping it up to be something more when it actually could just be a matter of we need to close, we need to button down the hatches, we need to we need to shake the tree a little more, tighten up shop of who we release, who we allow to get what right. It could be something very simple as that new. New procedures in the CIA, new procedures in the national security apparatus to help prevent this type of leak in the future. But they're undermining things simple like that with all of this mass hysteria. And the mass hysteria is seeking something that's bigger when in actuality it could be some simple re relevant fixes that I think any rational human being, American, would say, okay, we need a we need to patch up that hole. Because if this hole is how Russia got a hold of it, then let's patch up that hole and wipe our hands clean and keep moving. But they don't want that because they need to assuage the fact that they're 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 torment. They're tormented by the fact that they lost to Donald Trump. Exactly. So I mean we talk, we've been saying this from the beginning, right? I toot our own horn, that we have to be able to separate the Russian hacking, if it exists, from why Hillary Clinton won, lost. Because both things could be true, or rather, for, or rather, those two things aren't mutually inclusive. She could have lost despite the Russian hacking, 
and she could have lost had the Russian hacking not occurred at all, right? She would have lost. But for a lot of people, it becomes one and the same. She lost because of the Russian hacking, and they and they and they fill in the blanks as need be for why that why that case might might be. But at this point, the Democratic Party, in terms of the DNC and in their leadership, the political leadership, needs to get MSNBC under control. They need to get HuffPo under control. They need to get these liberal yeah. outlets under control, however they know how, because they are going to keep ramping up this hysteria to the point at which the Democratic Party is going to have to pursue an investigation for months, a like months long investigation down the line, only to be a big disappointment right before the the midterm elections but we've seen we've seen that like they're they're already planting the seeds for whose fault it is for why they lost midterms right kamala harris senator kamala harris came out and said hey we can't have these bernie wing progressives applying their purity test to governors in states you know in the 27 states that are going to be up in 2018 of course that doesn't mention that in a lot of these states these governors are up for a term limit like they know they're they're you're going on term limit issues uh that they don't have anyone necessarily to run and a, a host of other issues <laughs> like but they but they they, had, they haven't been planning is that far ahead but like they have already set this this on uh, set the uh set the narratives for why they they're going to lose in 2018 it has nothing to do with russia yeah. it has everything to do with bernie sanders and so it's like the democratic party if they were serious about winning elections and not simply about igniting the resistance to to impeach trump would be like would they would be constructing a policy agenda they're not though like they like and there's no way they can hammer Ob- they can there's no way they can hammer the Whatever, whatever the Republican bill is like, actually called, I, I just been making up funny names for it about like, how everyone's gonna die. Everyone's gonna die someday, Bill. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but uh, but um, it, it becomes hard to defend Obamacare without actually going a step further and pointing out how it was not a step far enough. And we do need to move toward universal health care, which is not really. <laughs> It's not going to please their corporate base. It's not going to explain why they lost. It's not going to. It's not going to do anything to soothe their ego or reconstruct that bubble. So why would they bother? It's not going. To, it definitely wouldn't make Rachel Maddow number one in ratings. And yeah, you know, I I don't I don't know. I, I mean, I I agree. I agree. I'm just looking at uh, <laughs> this is, this everyone is, sucks this is, with us. That, yeah, everybody sucks, but us. But no. Uh, but but serious. I love I I love the this is hilarious. This is so funny to me because I have this. I have a problem. I'm going to tell you my problem. I have a problem too. Before I'm sitting here trying to do the Benjamin Dixon show, and Benjamin Dixon show is and Benjamin Dixon is messing around on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 I am. I'm like, I'm laughing my ass off because these deplorables are ripping her. And 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 don't get me wrong, like I want to make it clear, like they they're like worse than the toe jam in between the feet of of a yeti. Um, that's what I think of the deplorables. But they are funny as hell right now. Like go go watch, go read some of the stuff they're saying about Rachel Maddow because it is it is obscene. It is it is it is disrespectful. I feel like Stephen A. Smith. This is disrespectful. The fact that she actually drew our attention to her show for something that was basically worth a decent uh, Huffington Post article, not even Washington Post article, right? It's good information for the Huffington Post. I would not for you. Yeah, I wouldn't. But here's my problem. Here's my problem. my time. But here's the thing. Here's my well, 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 let me tell let me tell you my problem before I forget it because well I won't forget it. it. My problem would have saved me from this. My problem is I don't really get excited about any news. Sometimes I have to have people tell me, Ben, that's major news. And then I'm like, oh shit, it is major news. So I have this, I have this automatic le- delay, this latency between the time I see a headline and the time I react to a headline. There have been very there have been some major stories that I have personally had to um maybe three or four hours before the average person, but I didn't jump on it because I'm like, hmm. This is kind of that thing. Rachel Maddow could have benefited from it. Don't get me wrong, because it causes me to miss some really breaking news and be the, you know, maybe the third person, not the first, but the third person to relay that message. But Rachel Maddow could have benefited from sitting on this for about two hours and just, you know, sipping on a little bourbon and really asking herself, is this really important? Because at, at the end of the day, sensationalization 
but it will not get people to come back to you, except for the people who are who are sycophants. And I get you, Brandon. You're right. There's some sycophants who are, who love what Rachel Maddow just did. But in terms of the artificial in inflation in her ratings tonight, that's disappeared and it's gone forever, as well as her respect. Her respect, I, the, whatever you, was left of it, is gone. Well, the, the, the absolute, I, I'm going to put a, make the decision that the best tweet of the night goes to at MGKAZT, who said to watch the Benjamin Dixon show instead of Maddo because it's the better decision with the bonus of pretty bad lefty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, because, because, dude, seriously, I, I, I had a feeling. I think a lot of people had the feeling. It didn't matter to me that the tax returns were from 2005 because something in 2005 could be extremely relevant to. I mean, listen, I, I, I don't know how much y'all paying taxes, but you better keep your taxes for years. Like, I mean, seven years is really you generally enough. But something could have happened in 2005 that had relevance. It could have shown an investment in a company that, you know, it could have been relevant. The year didn't matter as much as the fact that in the first five minutes of her show, I could tell, I could smell the bullshit that so she did not have I'm gonna anything. Be, I'm going to be irresponsible then. And I'm gonna make I'm gonna make some I'm gonna make some wild allegations. The normal, like, more than the normal. Know, the normal, but like no, but I meant like politically irresponsible, not personally, okay. not personally okay. irresponsible in my dating life. <laughs> but um, but I'm gonna make the I'm gonna make the thing say like, of is there something important in his tax returns? Absolutely. Um, is there something you know? Is the Trump administration trying to hide something about their connection to Russia. a foreign power? In yeah. Russia, absolutely right. But what it is is that there is this discrepancy or disproportionality between what is actually going on and what people think is going on. And I, I and again, this this, right. is, uh, this is the fault of the media, liberal media. This is the fault of Democratic Party leadership not being able to take you know take you know clean house and take itself to task for what happened. But a lot of this is also because the Trump administration is staffed by a bunch of sketchy looking white dudes. It's just like <laughs> it's like and, and that's not. That's not because they're white, but the, the Trump administration is staffed by the sketchiest looking people who just cannot seem to handle any kind of conspiracy or controversy or minor thing with any kind Carter of grace. Page. Like, with, uh, with any kind of grace.